Hey guys, welcome back to the last 53 years and 35 days, hey, flip number, of a massive chalice. We have five, eh, basically six years to go on getting our experience boost. And we're down two regions so far. Oh my god, so many people were born and died the moment I pressed that button. Oh, it's what's like going on here? getting the mail, only randomly and every few years. So, nothing like the mail. I feel like that dialogue happened last time one of these happened. Anyway, the mark. Valani Rabbit and her recently born baby Carrie have arrived at the capital in secret and in tears. She tells you that there is a very particular birthmark on her baby's back, the mark of the bard, and that it is a very evil omen. Barely intelligible between the sobbing, she exclaims that the moon is red tonight and that she doesn't know what to do. We will not be safe if my child lives. The baby, for its part, seems healthy to you, if a bit smelly. Oh, Jesus. Crazy beliefs that may or may not be true in this in this world, because we do have a, an in, insane demonic force called the Cadence attacking us, so who knows if it's true in this world. Option one. The mother is obviously crazy and potentially dangerous. Commit her and keep the baby. Uh, option two. Send the baby to be raised by Heliacon Rabbit, but don't tell the mother. Or pour chalice water on the baby? <laughs> How often am I gonna randomly consider doing things with the chalice? Maybe we can baptize. Maybe if I pour the chalice water on the baby, we can convince the crazy mother that she's been. It's been like baptized, and now it's safe or something somehow. God, all the baby-related options are always horrible. Like the other one's like, oh, do I do I get rid of that person, or do I execute that person, or banish that person, or do I throw the baby away? Like, there's all these terrible options. Let's see. I don't want to straight- I don't think I can straight up commit the person. But also, sending them to a different person could be problematic. Um... I guess they could- yeah, I guess, I guess the baby could be- The baby could be raised by the regent in secret. If I choose to believe that the evil omen doesn't- isn't real. Maybe I'll do that. Let's, let's, let's assume that the omen isn't real. And let- send them to be raised by the- by- a Heliacon. I hope this doesn't bite me in the ass. So the, uh, the mother assume, presumably thinks that it's dead now, but not, but it's not actually dead. I think. Uh, as if a great demon weight has been lifted. You take baby Carrie away from Volani and promise that the matter will be dealt with. The hero's relief is so profound that her body straightens itself as if she had just shrugged off an extra hundred pounds. Wow, you have no idea how much better I feel. Thank you, ruler. Thank you so much. Valani Rabbit has gained the clear-headed status, but Carrie has been sent to be raised with Helicon Rabbit. What's the new trait do? Uh, clear-headed. Increased intuition after emptying one's mind of needless thoughts. Oh. She'd be good then for... Let's see, what's her intuition like? Oh. 20? It's not, not that great. She didn't start at a good spot, necessarily. But it's, n it's not bad, necessarily. Alright, we'll see if that comes out poorly as a surprise later. Three years till we finish that training. Let's see if we can do it before the fight happens. Come on, ex increased experience. Did I, I made it. Our mental study was a success and among its many revelations is an experience boost for all your heroes. With this newfound knowledge, your heroes should learn and gain experience at increased rate. Awesome. That seems like a good thing to have. Let's see here. Who do I even want now? Can I get even better accuracy? None of these things seem new, so I don't think I can get like a super version of my accuracy thing. I could go for the Ultra Elixir. It's, yeah, it's better healing than my current Elixir, is, more, is my understanding of how that works, so I might as well upgrade that since anyone who has an extra equipment slot will equip that. I'm trying to be careful of what I upgrade, because I don't, I don't want to upgrade stuff that I'm just going to not use at all. And we're definitely hitting the point where my research... Maybe just because I had so many research locations at the beginning of the game, and, and I was so equipped at that point, that like... I think I may have researched pretty fast, and actually... It might be starting to run out of the things that I want to upgrade. <laughs> Let's see, we'll probably finish that this episode, even if we do get attacked. Heroes, right now. Yourselves. Your enemies wait to greet you! All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna completely ignore this bottom one because the top, one, the other two are both slightly damaged. So I'm gonna want to deal with them first. 
Let's see, I don't think I want to lose my rabbit family. And a newborn baby boy is probably more useful to me than bonus experience. So let's protect the rabbit family because I don't want to lose another house. We're not going to lose either of these. I'm just talking about like the next step down the road because whichever one I don't defend is going to have two, which means that they are be increasingly at risk of a bad thing happening. So let's let's protect the rabbits. Ruptures, cradlers, and twitch cradles and twitchers. Not not bad. Nothing that can give you negative permanent effects, as in like they can't take years off your life and they can't take experience away. They can just be damaging and crowding and stuff like that. So these characters all hit level ten. Chalk one up. Chalk one up. And Mad Bummer. These are overall great qual qualities. The question here is whether I want to keep these characters in combat or if I want to swap them out for lower level characters and level those ones up next. So that I have a, a whole cast of high level characters if needed. Because we are entering the final years and I keep thinking so that it's going to get harder. Let's see, so this is a wicker. Can I replace him with another wicker? We have a lot. Wow. One, two, three. We have so many levels. Oh God. We have a we have a huge quantity. Okay. Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't I don't think I need to do that then. If we have that many level tens, let's just find us ourselves a new alchemist to use. Let's see. Your brutalist level ten, age seventeen, child tendency daughters. Did, is this character? Nope. I've never used them before. All right. Uh. Yeah. E extra item slots. Acid. Bees in a bottle, blade storm. We'll do that steady hander. This person has room for a health vial, which is handy. Obviously, you don't need bonus experience because we have like maximum experience. You have advanced armor already equipped, so we're good. Oops. There we go. All right, so we have an entire, we have almost an entire cast of level tens. This one's level nine. We had such an experience boost there that I guess I don't necessarily need to worry about raising up more level tens because we have so many to pick from. Because that that list of level tens to, that I could go by on that replacement screen, those are the ones that aren't in my vanguard right now. There's that many waiting for me outside the vanguard. We've just we've completely capped out how experience works in this game at this point. Now it's just a matter of getting the years to run out. Because we definitely have more time to burn through before the game ends. Onward. We don't want to keep the cadence waiting. We're back in the golden area. I feel like this golden map seems to be one of the locations where I specific- Oh my fucking god. Really? Enemies in four different directions of me- Okay. Difficult- Yeah. I told you guys- I, I predicted that the game was going to get harder after, in the last 50 years. Look how many enemies. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There's 12 on-screen enemies at spawn. Fuck. Alright, well, those are all explodey dudes. With range. That's a twitcher, so he's the most dangerous because he can pull me to him. I think I'm going to have my entire... I'm going to have my entire team focus on these four down here. And if I move in this direction, I should hopefully be able to get out of line of sight of a lot of the other enemies. So, first of all... Let's focus on using my... I should probably focus on using my, yeah, my ranged character that does single target. I'll back off a little bit just to be safe. And then we're, we're going to focus fire the Twitcher. Stop him from doing anything dangerous to me. My first goal is just to get off in this direction with my party. Just so that I know that they're not going to get completely obliterated by the sheer number of guys that are in the area. Let's see... The big thing is getting those two alchemists to come down here so they're not directly in line of sight and in danger the whole time. Uh, we'll do, I'll focus on these guys first. Because these characters are not... They're further away so they're going to be harder to get hit. They're going to be harder to hit as an alchemist. So you move down. Focus fire on that guy too. Because the one that's closer is more likely to be in range of the alchemist as they're running down, so they can probably hit him. But yeah, my, my goal right now is just to run so that my alchemists are not in artillery range of these cradles. And then as a squad, we'll move from there. But I just want to make sure I don't get uh, totally screwed here. Let's see. So the alchemist can move this far. Whoa! 
Look at Mad Bomber. I have I I I knew it was gonna be more. I didn't realize we we're gonna go from five to ten though. That's that's crazy. Very high accuracy. There we go. Took him out. If it didn't kill him, the acid was going to. Now we're mostly out of attack range too. I'm just gonna back off with this character. There we go. Now as a cohesive unit, we can move forward as various enemies may or may not approach us in, in chase. I feel like that was the best thing to, to do in that situation. Oh, they were able to reach us with that. Okay. Well now as they're approaching, if they're standing close enough together, I might be able to shoot them with my... Oh. I may be able to double target them with my alchemist. Let's see. You should take out the guy that's standing in the middle of my crowd, because you're the non you're the non AOE partner partner. That's what's good about that character is they single target only, so they're they're the safest choice for fighting enemies that are near my characters, because they can do so without hurting anyone. Let's see here. I want to shoot those guys, but I don't want to hurt my party member. Let's have him move forward a little bit. Into throwing, yeah, going into throwing range. So we're gonna start. We're gonna want to start bombing these guys. Bees in the bottle is that what I want to do? It'll be bees in the bottle are probably the uh, smart thing to do because it'll be persistent. Because those those guys are gonna have uh, there's gonna be ads coming out of those guys when I kill them. S let's see. You'll be in attack range. But from back here, you can hit that guy from there. So let's do that, because then you leave room for the other guy to move in front of you and shoot afterwards. There we go. These guys are surprisingly durable. Move forward with this guy. No cradles in line of sight except for the ones I'm shooting right now, which is good. Can't hit that one at all? Okay, fine. Bam! We can at least try to bomb the remains of them now. Most- I think these- all the- all the exploding guys I don't think are actually in line of sight. I don't think they can reach us from here. Let's get around the corner here, I think. Uh, let's see what the- let's see what the, uh... What our explosive guy can do first. There we go. Let's just destroy some fools. There we go. That's the ads taken care of. That's about the best I can do for now. Realistically, I couldn't- oh no! The cr the Cradle has Avenger? I didn't realize that. And he also is taking bee stings. Did not- did not realize that the Cradles had a, a, a Avenger. That means that they're taking a- uh, They do bonus damage when, when one of their partners dies. Is that all he's gonna do? Is just summon and not attack me? Or is he gonna attack me now? Nope, he's gonna summon too. Alright, yeah. Throw all the enemies you want at me. As long as, if you're not hitting me with artillery strikes, you're not that much of a threat. It's the one where he, the part where he shoots me that's is what's dangerous. It's a lot of bee stings. <laughs> I'm hoping that the bees will help me with the ads that that get summoned when I kill him soon. Let's see, knockback flask. Can I throw it in a proper direction where it'll make him get stunned? What if I move forward a bit? I don't want- uh, I might reveal something nasty if I go that way, though. Let's try it, though. Any surprises? Nope. Knock back this guy into a rock. Oh! Yep, knocking him into the wall killed him. Cool. Now I can AoE him with the other alchemist. But I have to worry about these- these exploding guys coming after me. Let's see, can I use this hunter to kill... I can use them to kill one of the ads over here. Oh, what if I could line them up over here, though? Probably not. That's not realistic. Alright. You're gonna get in position just to shoot the one dude that's coming in. And then I'm gonna move this alchemist forward that still hasn't moved yet. He's gonna try to shoot that crowd, and then these characters with the penetrating shots are gonna try to kill the guys on the bridge as they approach. Let's see. So you can target from there? Good. You'll hopefully kill all of them at once. Come on. Cool. Their predictions of accuracy seem to be accurate. 
God, that's a lot of kills really quickly. This is a really powerful unit. Alright, so now I want to get in line to shoot these guys. I should be able to one-shot them if I'm lucky. Get them both at once. Yep. There we go. This, this whole squad is so effective. Holy shit. This is working about as well as it possibly could. And I've got my one archer left over to hopefully kill that one remaining seed. I think. I think the other archer hasn't done anything yet. Yep. He can still just move up here and shoot this guy in the face. That went about as cleanly as I could have possibly w hoped it would. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with my decision so far. Can that cradle target us yet? Are they just gonna walk around? We're probably gonna focus fire that cradle next. Get him from a distance. Oh, a twitcher. That's bad. Probably deal with him next instead then. Those bees are just wandering around. I want to scout around here look for more bad guys, but I, I should focus on the obvious threats first. Ooh, I could just one-shot this guy, can't I? Alright. That's the twitcher out of the way. Cool. Now let's focus on these other guys. What can I accomplish with these archers? You're gonna get in the way, so we'll move the other guy first. So as to avoid. There we go. The adds are one thing, but the, pr the primary goal is just to wipe out the cradle itself first. Because the cradle is the one that can do the nasty artillery strike that can actually do real damage. Whereas the seeds have to approach me relatively slowly. And I might be- I still might be able to AoE them from here. Just have to be careful not to walk directly into the bee storm. The bees do seem- I had a really effective first use of the bees, but since then I think they're not- I don't think they're necessarily the best, uh, unit. They were just kind of fun that one time. Not a great chance of accuracy, but hopefully it won't hurt anyone on my team. That hit no one. It's amazing that an explosion at that distance could somehow not hurt anyone at all. And this character can't throw that far, so... I'm tempted to just... Uh, let's move around slowly, see if we can spot anyone in the area. Nope, looks like we don't see any... I don't see anyone hiding out around here. This part of the island seems to be safe. Alright, now we'll just shoot them as they're trying to cross bridges. Should be relatively safe. It looks like this is actually a really small map. Like, the initial ambush was actually the entire encounter, basically. All those bees are just crawling around. Alright. Time to shoot some dudes. Triple kill! God damn. That is effective. So I am standing kind of close to the uh, incoming attackers. Should probably do something about the fact that I'm standing near the bees. Maybe back off a bit. I actually can't... Eh, I can move a little bit without going into the poison. Do I want to shoot you or do I want to shoot those guys? If I stand, if I stand here, can I shoot you both? Nah, I can't get in the range of shooting both of them, so it doesn't matter. Alright. I'll head this way just because it feels like it's going to be a useful direction in the long run. Since if there's anyone left, it's going to be in the, in the top corner of the map. There we go. So can you target anyone? You can. Cool. I might be able to get a kill here and then let the archer take out the other dude. Go! Nailed it! Oh shit. People will be dead up in here, like so bad. Alright, now shoot him in the face. Oh! Surprise extra guy. He shouldn't be able to reach me though, so it's not a big concern. He'll spend his turn running towards me probably, and then I'll shoot him right before it gets to me. And he, there's a good chance he's the last remaining enemy. Silent as the shadows. Uh, I'll stay... I'll, yeah, I'll back up a little bit. Just in case. And I'll keep moving forward with this character, just in case this last corner has a, a dude in it. But I don't think it does. Nope, no surprises. Oh, there's a few up here, though. Wow. I wonder how much how much stuff could be hidden up there. Moving forward with this character, I can shoot one of them. Oh! There's a whole cradle stashed up there, okay. That's a little more problematic. What can this character do? He can't really hit anything. We'll just we'll just charge forward a bit. Just to get him ready for future fighting. 
Alright, penetrating shot. Can I hit two at once? Can't hit the cradle at all. I'll focus on the one that's closest, I guess. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. My alchemist probably could have hit that guy, so I should, probably should have hit the further away one. Oh well. The important thing is they still can't reach us. My alchemist is kind of trapped at this point. Uh... And even if he sprints, he can't clear all the acid. Uh, my alchemist is, gonna, is just gonna stay put for now, I think. Archer, what can you hit? This is the full, this is the, the widest, yeah, that, that's the biggest distance I can shoot from to hit the uh, cradle. Let's try to take him out. Oh, wow. I can one-shot the cradle. Alright, that, that'll, that gives us a lot of targets for my AoE characters next turn. And they see me, which is good, that means they'll head my way. I want them to. And turn... Oh, you have a turn? Oh, right, that was the previous turn I put took you down here. Well, there's nothing down here to look at, so... Good job scouting, I guess. And you're just gonna have to stay put because the archers are blocking your path. These are probably the last guys, is, w is what I've said like three times now. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Ooh, they're all bunching up nice and... easily for my, for, for my alchemist. Although my alchemist probably... Uh, my alchemist can probably hit them now. More or less. Focus on the big guy. There we go, that's some serious damage. And then that guy's gonna blow up on his remaining partner. Not not gonna kill him, but it'll, it'll help. There we go. I'll go ahead and take the kill with my character that has a, a relic to level up. Since that's, the, that's pretty much the only thing that's getting experience at this point. Wow. This character's, that character's chalk one up st uh, buff is up to 35% now. So they've, they've gotten seven kills then. Yep, Birthright's still leveling up. That's the only thing that really still gets experience at this point. Yeah, that's, that's my biggest mistake in this playthrough is I don't have enough high level relics at this point. But I don't think my party is particularly hurting. So I don't, I'm not overly torn up about it. Oh, that was the fight. Flawless victory. Drinks are on me tonight. If I could buy drinks. All right. And if you could drink them. My, la my last remaining character is now level 10. So whole party is now all level 10 with all their crazy level 10 upgrades that are pretty badass. These fights are definitely getting shorter the more high power the characters get. A new orphan. Uh, I give the last one to Shadow Cloak. Oh, there's... It's a baby boy. Let's give it to Shadow Cloak. They don't have a single male. Which is problematic. Didn't I... Don't they have child tenancy daughters or something? Child tenancy sons? You lie to me. Oh well. Alright, so hopefully... We'll get a chance to defend the Crucible in a way that doesn't endanger anyone else. So really, the ne next round would be the best time for the Crucible to get under attack. Because nothing else can be wiped out. And here comes our research. Go, go, go! The Ultra Elixir is ready for human trials. That's a concerning way to put it. Now I'm a little worried. Let's see what kind of upgrades do I want. Now I'm definitely starting to feel like, do I still have stuff to upgrade my characters with? Vitaly Band. Uh, increase the maximum health of heroes. Is Sponge Stone the one that heals you over time? Oh, it steals health. Wonder Pants. Avoids wrinkler and la lapse effects. Age and rage. Kill your characters faster for more damage. That's just worrying. Probably upgrade something permanent like stats, right? Advanced hunter armor, maybe? Elite caber training. What's a blunder bow? Oh, that's a close range bow. Yeah, that's a weird option. Boom slinger. Oh yeah, we don't have a special weapon for the slingers. Let's see. It seems like an obvious idea in hindsight, but by studying the chemistry of ruptures, we believe we can build some dangerously combustible flasks as well as a new slinger to hurl them. That's vague as far as what it does, but let's give it a shot. That sounds like fun. All right. Back to fast forwarding. The last 40 years we're getting there. Our thoughts will be with the regent today. Ours probably won't be the only ones. I kind of had a personal goal of like, what if I could actually finish this game tonight? But now I'm thinking that like, 
Nope, not gonna make it. I've, I've been playing. I think I've been playing today since like year when I since having like 110 years left. So I've made it like 70 years, but it's just, it's definitely a long game. <laughs> Alright, we have a new we have a new partner to replace. He's he's 59, so he won't last much longer either. Uh, what do I go with here? You're eight years old. I mean, you're you're level eight. You're level eight, age 50, close. Oh, heart disease. If you're gonna have children, let's avoid heart disease. Slow. I'm blown away by how many people still have negative traits because I've been cho I've been choosing against them so consistently. Leia, Shadow Cloak, Hawkeye, Hardy, Quick Steady, Optimistic, Lone Wolf. These are all good things. I'm going to go with you. Oh, I lost you. There we go. Congratulations on your new marriage to this guy that's more than twice as old as you. That's creepy. Alright, don't worry, he'll be dead in like two years. <laughs> this gets dark, doesn't it? Oh god. No, not the regent of the manor. Is that the same regent? Was that the same regent of the exact same house that I just was at? I'm not... I'm better keeping track of some of this stuff a little bit. I don't always keep complete track of who we zoomed in on. Anyway... We need a new regent. That's a lot of girls. All the males have... Oh, there's a high fertility one. Nearsighted and forced... That's not... Nearsighted and bare strength, strength are not very good traits for an enforcer, necessarily. Child tenancy daughters? Well, someone else has child tenancy sons, so I guess that's not terrible at this point. And you're brainy and bountiful and tranquil? Those are good traits. Asthmatic. Ooh, Hawkeye, Nimble, Hardy, Young and... These are all good. Okay. You get the job, Wendell. And you're also 30, so you're not particularly old either, so you'll be around for at least another good 20 years. Maybe 30. Probably not 40. And there's like 40 years left, so he'll, she'll be around for most of the remain... Wow. I'm picking, like, the last people that are gonna die before this game is won, basically, is kind of what I'm picking at this point. Let's see, how about this guy? Child tendency towards sons? Nope, someone else already has that and you're slow. Dimwitted. Intelligence doesn't matter for this group. Bountiful Hardy. Yeah, those are good traits on that rabbit. Oops. Oh, I keep missing the confirm button. <laughs> like I've never used a mouse before. Alright. A few more years to crank through. A good mind is harder to replace than the best weaponry in the world. God damn, Paul lived to be 75. He's old enough to remember when there was two, uh, Sage Ride Guilds. Whoops. Uh, ooh, Roderick here is age 16. He's age 16 and has two intuition of 23. That means when, he's, when he gets older, he's gonna have even more intuition, and he's, he's young enough, he'll actually probably live long enough to... He'll probably live long enough for the game to end, actually. Alright, Roderick, get in there. It's a good pick. Go, 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 go! Oh. Strong skills can last longer than bloodlines. There's a technique I know. The Forearc, that came from a standard seven generations before me. Todrick Selwyn. I don't know him. Nobody does, but they know his techniques. It's really unfortunate they don't have enough dialogue to make it through the whole game. Because, like, I, I hear the same dialogue over and over again about, like, I don't know him. Nobody does, but they know his techniques. Or, did I, did we ever tell you about the battle of whatever gate? Uh, the house, the house without houses, or, or, the, or whatever they said. Like, it's just, like, I get it, guys. You said those lines before. It's like, I feel like they could have gotten enough, they could have written enough dialogue lines just for one playthrough. I'd be okay with repeated ones for the next one, but I get here. I hear them a little too much. So here's the death of yet another greed, the dying family, the tragic family of my uh, of my game that has died out. Actually, I think I had I think I had a family die out in the first 50 years, but that was just because I, I ran out of family members. But this is the this is the house that actually had a dynasty. So we need a new standard. Really could just pick anyone that's level 10. It's easier to pick ones that aren't in my crew already. If I pick someone young, they'll be around for a while, too. Here, look at this guy. 21 years old. Pack Hunter is a cool trait to give people. He'll probably live for the rest of the game. And he, he's already level 10. Good, good choice. There we go. 
That's crazy that I have people that I've never used in combat before that are already level 10 because of how crazy my experience has gotten. I feel like things are going about as well as they could, really. What's gonna happen? We can't decide on what the right move is here. So, we require a third party. The Balloon Man. An old man with steady eyes stands before you. I have been beyond the corruption, he asserts. I have built a hot air balloon for this purpose, and I have seen what can't be seen. But nobody will trust my word. I ask to take your hero, Hugo, Hugo Wicker. Who's that? Hugo Wicker, level 9, not a member of my vanguard. Alright, maybe. On a new expedition to prove that insanity lies... That insanity lies not within me, but out there in the expanse. I guarantee that'll be the most illuminating experience. I can say, let Hugo Wicker go, we need to know more about what's out there, or threaten the old man with jail time unless he tells you what he saw, or why do I have to threaten him? I could just ask him to tell me, Jesus, or turn the old man down, we can't spare anyone. No, we have a lot of people, I could probably spare someone. And he's clumsy. Yeah, he's a clumsy, oblivious hunter, so I don't necessarily... Oh, oblivious doesn't matter, but being clumsy is a bummer for a hunter, so it's not that big of a deal to send him out. He's brainy, so he's pre he'd probably be psyched to go on that kind of journey. So yeah, let's let him go. Balloon Hero. Hugo Wicker jumps into the giant balloon contraption with the old man who whoops and promises that he will. T this will be like nothing the hero has ever seen before. He'll be gone for 10 years. There's not that much game left when he gets back. Oh well. Have fun, Hugo. That's probably a good stopping point for the episode, guys. Thanks for watching, like always. I'll see you next time. 38 years to go. I, I, I never was paying quite as much attention to the countdown until it was like the last... We're like less than 100 years. It's like, ooh, it feels so close now. Thanks for watching.